brightly. Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's webinar, Numbers That Matter, The Power of Business Intelligence and Education. I just want to do a quick introduction before we turn it over to our speakers today. Uh, Jack Bay, the Chief Operations Officer at District 49 in Colorado, and a longtime friend of the Dude here, and David Cornegie um, with School Dude. He is our community manager here. We affectionately refer to him as DK and um, has been with us for quite some time and can provide a lot of insight and feedback on this topic. So today, uh, quickly to go over the agenda, we're going to be going over the value of data and business intelligence and education and how you can apply KPIs and metrics in your operations department, um, as well as do a case study with Jack at District 49, and then um, an overview of uh, Dude Intelligence, our newest uh, business intelligence solution. So uh, without further ado, I'll turn it over to DK to kick us off. That will work. Thank you very much. Uh, what we always want to discuss first is the why. So you probably heard about the importance of data in the news. And many of you may wonder, well, how does that data really impact schools? And many times we, we hear about data and statistics in the classroom, but what are we looking at from things such as operations? How can we use data to make things more efficient and deliver some, some better results than we've seen in the past? And many of you already have data. You have that foundation. Uh, some of you, it may be paper, it could be emails, spreadsheets all the way up to databases. There's a lot of information that's floating around out there, and in many cases it's stored in, in many locations, in various locations all throughout your organization. But it's not just enough to have it. You actually have to use it. That's one of the key elements is from this data, you need to be able to make very informed decisions. And what that's going to lead to is essentially what we call knowledge. So when we talk about things going up into a scale or an evolution, you have to begin first with what you know, then how you're going to begin applying it so you can make wise decisions to eventually lead to wisdom. And for me, you know, knowledge comes, becomes wisdom. That, that's definitely a, a key element. But it's all about action as well. So if I was going to be a, a Sherpa on this mountain, I would have a big action label across my back. So you, have, you can have all the data in the world, but if you're not willing to do something with it to learn and improve, then it's essentially useless. And so that's why we talk about this concept of business intelligence. It's really taking a look at the information to make those informed actions and informed decisions and to get that flow going. So you'll hear us talk about some, some terms today, such as benchmarking, key performance indicators, which is KPIs, and you'll always see reporting is there as well. So let's begin first with, well, what is a KPI? The business world calls them key performance indicators, and we talk about it as keeping or keep, keep proving your impact that's out there. Uh, that's one of the things I, I see is really not done very well is showing the impact that operations has in the educational world. So what we wanted to do was talk about the whole concept of KPIs and, and benchmarks and reporting and statistics to show that impacts are being made. You know, so keep KPIs in our world is how you determine areas of improvement. You can keep making your operations better based on those decisions and based on those insights. There are specific measurements you can gauge how you're doing. It could be a specific ratio like work order requests to preventive maintenance requests. It could be cost recovery standards when people come in and use your facilities. So that's why we keep talking about keep proving impact and, and also keep proving insight as well. And not every KPI is created equal. To, to really get the most out of your data, we suggest you look at KPIs in certain areas that make the most impact on your operations, and then you can start to utilize those in benchmarking as a whole. So in its simplest terms, Benchmarking is essentially a, uh, a goal. Uh, that, that's where you want to get with these. You need to start comparing yourself out there to what other people are doing. When I was first looking at benchmarking about 10 years ago, uh, what, what a gentleman was bringing up were, were essentially counties in Texas and what they were spending on insurance. And you would start seeing these little variances, and they would be right next to each other. So if I was looking at insurance on the coast, yeah, I could probably expect that to be a little bit higher, but then when you see this one place that's a red and it's surrounded by greens and yellows, like, well, where is that red? 
And the value of the KPIs is you start really digging into what's occurring. And, and one of our uh, founders says there's no such thing as a bad number. It's really you have to understand the story behind the number and analyze what's happening. You get the conversations going. You get the questions going. You really want to understand what's happening and be able to prove what's out there as well. So can we prove why this is, uh, this is happening? Uh, can we prove that we're actually accomplishing something over time? And if we're trying to make arguments to expand our resources, whether it be personnel or materials or, or both, we need to make a case. You, know, you can bring me an opinion and we can discuss it, but I can't really make an informed decision without data. So that's a very key element is if you can back up your opinion with, with statistics and the stories behind those statistics, it makes a very compelling case to get those additional resources. So we really want to focus on how to use the benchmarking. Uh, and you can also look at benchmarking as a standard, the best practices. They're an industry standard. So if we look at somebody who's high performing and then compare them as a goal, you can also use them as a baseline if you're looking at steps toward reaching a, a standard that may be out there. You have to gauge your progress and tie that back in to KPIs. Also, when you're working towards KPIs and benchmarks, you want to show how insightful the data is. Is it updated automatically without manual interference? I know I run into that a lot. Is uh, We even do this internally where we have to look at Excel spreadsheets, and it's really cumbersome to constantly update who's got the right copy of this, who's got the right copy of that, do I have to pull data in and, and start manipulating it again. So being able to look at information very uh, high level but with minimal impacts, that's one of the biggest things that we would look at from KPIs being insightful but not have to put a lot of effort into uh, seeing that. We want our effort to be spent on thinking and analyzing, not preparing the numbers. And you want those numbers to be in-depth so you can pinpoint the areas that need to be improved and show your administrators your success. You want them to be accessible to anyone who might need them, not just anyone, but you know anyone who might need them. And try to reduce the amount of dead trees that they have in their hands. It's one thing you're going to see today is something called dynamic filtering or dynamic usage, where if someone has a question, it changes right there on the spot versus a piece of paper is static and at that little snapshot in time. And you also want it to be readable. So, you know, that's one of the things is can it be interpreted easily? Can it be delved into or dived into? Uh, is it easy to really see what's happening behind the scenes? And what, when you're looking at things like business intelligence, you really want to look at the size of the database and the quality of the database. We're going to be looking at quality uh, topics a little bit later. But really, that's what's going to give great benchmarks. And we looked at over 6,000 institutions, and that data is being rolled up. We're talking millions of work orders and IT work and uh, things that we've seen over 16 years. And these numbers are continuing to grow on a daily basis. So not only do our clients get to see how their KPIs and benchmarkings are compared on a national level, but they can also pinpoint specific data points against their peers who may be a similar size, a similar demographic, a similar region to help get some of the, the information. And that's where we're going to be bring Jack in in a few moments is talk about his experiences uh, at the local level and also at the state level. Uh, but I believe, uh, Sam, we have a poll here. So we, uh, that's one of the things we wanted to gauge is, are there any things you're already doing on a, on a basis of, of analysis with things like KPI, statistics, numbers, uh, any types of trends that may be out there? So what types of KPIs are, are people currently using right now? So I'll give people a chance to respond to the poll. Demographics is one I've been hearing on a state level. Uh, I'm very fortunate to get to work with a few uh, states on, on these types of initiatives and, and a, on a national initiative, and, and demographics is often coming into that from a planning standpoint and an operation standpoint. Okay, so I'm going to give that another 10 seconds, and you know, then we're going to switch over to, uh, to Jack, because I wanted to just talk about some of the whys, but then also want Jack to talk about some of the hows. All right, so we're going to close the poll, and luckily we are seeing a good number of folks that are using it from an operational standpoint, uh, and also the demographic data, not a shocker there. Financial, that's, that's very key. 
very key as well. So let's actually talk about uh, something in action. So we thought we would bring in Jack from Falcon to talk, talk about some of the things that they're working on. Um, and to really talk about District 49, uh, they strive to be the best district to learn, work, and lead. The, the, all three of those priorities, to learn, to work, and to lead, are very critical. So you have to offer a lot of different options to a lot of different students. So students would choose to focus on their educational experience around programs and schools that are best suited for their needs. So District 49, to be a great place to work, is committed to attracting excellent staff members, talented teachers, and top administrators. It's an even better place to work when it's an awesome place to live. And that's one of the things you'll hear the, the dude talk about a lot is, is how these things are all synchronized. And District 49 is really one of those areas that focuses on that. So they want to be the best leaders for the district. So aspiring principals and veteran program administrators want to apply their leadership skills to its problems and its opportunities. So when the district might be the best place to learn, work, and lead, it also attracts learners, workers, and leaders who want to be a part of District 49 and continue to make it an outstanding district. Their vision is to be the best choice in public education. They envision a future where every time a student, parent, or educator chooses a school district, they are the best choice that they can make. They have a mission to learn, work, and lead. The commitment is to be the best place to work and to lead creating environments so everybody is always doing that. District 49 spans 133 square miles of urban and rural areas in Colorado, covering northeast Colorado Springs and the Falcon area of El Paso County, and they are located in Peyton, Colorado. But currently, they're serving 19,000 students, and they offer choice of school options. So wanted to give a, a good introduction for the folks there. Uh, Jack, anything I may have missed along those lines? No, uh, thank you very much for, for the introduction. I mean, it, uh, you know, it sounds kind of strange coming from, from uh, somebody other than you know, somebody within our school district, but it's, uh, it, it's really you know, kind of an interesting uh, story about us, as you know, and what we, you know, since we really, most uh, school districts are really more what I would call autocratic top-down uh, districts, and we chose really to be just totally different than that. So I appreciate the comment. Absolutely. And we wanted to have a, a few key questions of, of how Jack is using things like key performance indicators. So we wanted to understand what do you consider some of the most important items to track in, in overall performance? Uh, so how do you rate and how do you use your highest profile KPIs and how you're using them with your staff? Yeah, you know, it's really interesting. I, I noticed on the poll that, uh, you know, operations and financials actually dominated the, the, the survey. Um, but we kind of take a little bit of a different approach, and it's really, it, it's been a journey. It uh, didn't start out this way, but really over the last four, four, four and a half years, uh, it's been really kind of interesting because we really started out with um, more of the operations side of the business really dominating the KPIs. When I first introduced them you know, within my chief operations reports that we were giving to our board and our senior leadership, um, they began to realize that we had an awful lot of, you know, performance data on there. How are we doing it? I guess being a financial person at heart, even though I'm in operations, you know, uh, graphs and stuff were, you know, always for me were, you know, it, it, it gave us an opportunity to say a lot more than we could in, in, a, in a statement. So we use it really, you know, throughout our entire organization now, uh, not only in nutrition services, but particularly in curriculum, uh, we're doing an awful lot of stuff in the areas of KPIs as well. And, um, you know, it's, it's interesting when you really look at how we use them, uh, I think really with our dynamics of being a decentralized organization, it's almost imperative that we have performance data that comes from various areas so we can get an indication of how are we doing. Um, you know, what we do with our supervisors is really kind of interesting. Um, what, what the KPIs for us have become is really part of our daily fabric of our, our work. Um, we use it to indicate how we're doing, where we're doing. So. What we do is you know, almost on a daily uh, basis, um, we find team members, um, you know, visiting a little bit about their KPIs, where they're at, what we need to do. So it allows us to focus, uh, to pay attention to detail. Um, you know, in the areas of, of on the operations side of it, you know, one of the real keys that they look at is really the work orders completed in less than a week. We feel that as an organization, we have an obligation to our uh, uh, the instructional side of the business to basically get everything done as soon as we can. And so we realize that especially in the areas of facilities, we have to order parts and do things like that. And so 
We try to get it done within uh, really typically four days. We say a week, but it's really four days for us. But yet if you compare that on the IT side of it, the IT world is totally different. If we don't get, since a lot of our education is being dominated by IT right now, we realize if we don't get things done in the course of a day, then we're failing our, our uh, educational side of the business as well. So that's kind of a little bit of how we use it. But, you know, when we're also having in team meetings where we're visiting on a weekly basis or a monthly basis, we're also using those as indicators of where are we at. Uh, we realize that this is a journey. Um, so we look at it and say, okay, you know, have we made improvement over the last week or the last month? Or, you know, are we stagnant? Or are we going down? So we use it in, in a way of, um, you know, it's a tool that we use every day that starts out. How are we doing? Excellent. So let's go to one of the next areas, which is looking at overall or top or peak performance and where do you want to improve? Yeah, I think it's interesting as an organization when we talk a little bit about this. Um, you know, as you see in our profile, we want to be the best. And I think it's kind of interesting when you look at our school district because we do not have a superintendent, the traditional model of education. Uh, but it's kind of interesting when you look at the, all three of us as the chief, the chief education officer, the chief financial officer, as well as myself, we all have a desire uh, to be the best. Uh, we don't want to be an average school district by any means, so we want to be the best in all areas. And that's easy to say, but difficult to do. Um, and so, you know, we've identified, um, you know, that, that we really, in some of our metrics that we currently have, we're in the top 20%. Um, but we look at it from this standpoint, we're really is that good or bad? And so we said, we really want to be a, a peak performer. We want to be the, the best of the best. And being from an educational system, we said, okay, well, you know, if you're in the top 90%, then you're getting an A. And that's usually the best grade that you can get. So that's the that's level that we want to be at. <laughs> yeah, and you're, you're competitive too, so <laughs> which we love see, seeing people be uh, competitive, but also driving the, uh, the conversation. Um, so how have a lot of those things changed the culture? <clears throat> well, it, it's really changed it in a very neat way. Um, when most school districts are really going against the grain and not – they don't want to compete, not only in the educational world, but also in other, other worlds. We've chosen a whole different uh, mission, and we said we want to be innovative from this standpoint, that we realize competition is a fabric of, you know, our daily lives as we watch football on TV or we watch the election that we had, you know, last evening or a couple of evenings ago or whatever it is. Uh, we realize that competition is part of it, but we try to do it in a, in a way that we're building team support, um, give you an idea, we have a mini competition that's going on right now between our IT department and our uh, facilities department to see who is going to be a school do, uh, campus champion first. Um, and so, but we do it in, in a way that, you know, we're not doing it from a demeaning standpoint that nobody's going to win. It's just really because of our commitment to being the best, we truly want to get everybody there as well. So it builds camaraderie, but what we're beginning to, to realize as well is that it's creating a situation of everybody wanting to focus on the district. And we, you know, it's kind of interesting when we talk about being the best. We realize that, you know, how I actually communicate that, that to my staff and as we start talking a little bit about, you know, metrics and things like that is it's getting better every day. Let's just get better every day. I was fortunate to have played college baseball, and one of the things I learned in that was, you know, is I had to get better every day that I went out to compete. And so we tell that to our folks. And, you know, we have a little bit, but it gives us a little bit of fun, too. You know, if one of our departments is struggling a little bit, we get a chance to needle them a little bit. And we also get to celebrate when they actually get there. And so that's kind of the fun thing. But one of the things that I think is key to us that we use that we want to actually validate how are we doing. Um, so what we've done is we've said, you know, we're, we're also in, uh, on a mission with the Baldridge. And something that I'm doing this week is in the Baldridge uh, process of performance excellence, uh, we want to get better. So it gives us a chance really to uh, have a framework of, you know, how everybody's doing, you know. And so that's one of the neat things that it's allowed us to do within ours. But, you know, it, it's interesting what happened when, as I said earlier, I had started uh, some three, three plus years ago putting metrics in my chief operations report. Well, now all of a sudden you have our chief financial officer doing it. You know, our chief education officer, the education side is really blown away with some of the metrics that they're Presenting, and then we give that to our board of education. So now we've set really uh, 
a whole thing of uh, competition amongst everybody, and so now we're all paying attention to some sort of metrics or KPI. Yeah, and, and that's one of the things that would work on a regional level too, right? Yeah, and we use it, and I can comment on that a little bit. I appreciate that, DK, because not only do we want to be, you know, the best within our uh, uh, Colorado Springs, uh, but then we look at it because our first com comparison that we do is along the way is we compare locally. Um, we've got roughly about seven or eight school districts within our, our area that we compete with, but then we also say, okay, well, let's compete with our, uh, the rest of our uh, compadres, you know, throughout the state of Colorado. And then we look at the, the region. We try to get a, a, the region. And what I love with school dude more than anything is the ability to compare, you know, throughout the nation. So we look at the region being the southwest region, but then we also look and we try to drill down on how we do a national. So there's various levels where we really want to compete. Uh, we realize our probably the most important competitive part for us is competing locally because we want to benchmark ourselves against those districts because truly what we've realized in our business, and this is kind of unique in our area, is that we are competing for students. Um, and since we realize that, we realize that they're, you know, the better that we can show how we compare and stack up against our peers, then the better chance we have. Because I think one of the things, DK, that we really love to do is, you know, we, when you had your, uh, the hierarchy of information is transparency. We want to make sure that we're very transparent in how we do. So these KPIs we use not only to compare against the rest of our districts, but we also market that. And so we display that on our website. How are we doing against our peers? Excellent. And what do you recommend for those folks that are just getting into it or, or not, not down that path yet? You know, I, I think the biggest thing is really looking at it, trying to figure out, uh, and I appreciated the comment that you said earlier, one of the things that we try to do is make sure that our KPIs that we're getting is part of our daily work. So what I mean by that is we're getting it from an online system. It's coming directly out of our system. We're not having to create uh, a, an updated Excel spreadsheet or something else manually. We want to make sure that it's being done online real time. And so what we, I would recommend is, you know, for folks is to find a, especially in the world of technology today, if you can find a, um, you know, uh, some sort of system, and we're fortunate that School Dude is one of those systems for us that we use, and we validated it. You know, we've looked at it a bunch of things, but when, when I first found School Dude, it was probably the best thing that ever happened to us. Um, but, you know, to start small, pick a few things that you think are important to you. Um, like what I said earlier, what we do is, you know, um, Average hours worked per staff member is important to us because that shows our time on task. Um, but pick a few of them and then work yourself a little bit smaller, you know, on those and making sure that you understand what it is that I'm trying to accomplish. Find a way that you can stack up against your peers and then, you know, play with it a little bit. As you get a little bit more sophisticated with it, then you have an opportunity to be able to, uh, to expand it. The, give you an idea right now, we have, we've created from our KPIs a scorecard. So we want to look at maybe five or six KPIs that we have that are in a general area and give us our, give ourselves a scorecard. And so I think if you just start doing it that way, work a little bit at a time, get a little bit better, and then keep adding to that. But I think the critical side of that is finding uh, an online system that will help you as you do your daily work that will give you information immediate feedback from that system of how are you doing immediately so you don't have to do it in a manual way. Yeah, and that, that's a really a key element. Like I say, it, it, it's now that the tools are getting better to, to really look at massive amounts of data but also easily look at those, those items. You know, a lot of it is the whole garbage in, garbage out, GIGO is what we call it. Uh, I'm a big fan of the term QOD, so maybe it's because I did work on a military base. I like to have as many acronyms as possible, so QOD is the one I've been really harping on over the last year. Uh, what are some of the things that you do from a quality standpoint to say these are things we want to make sure we, we absolutely have to get the best statistics we possibly can in KPIs and, and, and comparison and benchmarks? Well, you know what we do is we clean our data, too. We look at it. We just, you know, we get work orders and tickets and information from all over the place. And so we have one of our individuals that's on uh, my uh, executive administrative team that really, you know, it's her responsibility to, to validate the data, to take a look at it. Does it really make sense? Is there, is there multiple information? Or do we have multiple 
tickets that are really in doing the same thing. So we do a little bit of, you know, behind the scenes monitoring just to make sure. And then we'll reach out to some of the people that put in the work orders just to validate it to make sure it's, it's, a, it's a true work order or even on the IT side. So we try to make sure that we ensure that the data that's coming in through our uh, system is correct data because you said the, the, the better the data, the better the, the quality of the decision you get to make out of the data. Absolutely, and and so some of the KPIs that we look at, uh, you know, one might strike a few people odd, or two of them might strike people odd, is whether or not you have square footage identified on a building, or if you have students identified. And the reason that we have those is for comparative standards and also from funding standards. Uh, some people are funded on a per student basis. Uh, some people are looking at when they're comparing buildings. Uh, they they may look at things from a square footage standpoint versus an occupancy standpoint. So making sure that you have that data identified helps really vamp up what your KPIs are going to be pulling in, especially when you're looking at work orders per student or incidents per student. Uh, some people like to gauge their resources on different methodologies, uh, but like say the funding aspect may come into that as well. So looking at comparisons between the, the staff versus what you were dealing with with uh, you know, work orders o overall or incidents overall. And yeah, these you know, are some the, comparisons yeah. you're doing at, right? These are some comparisons yeah, you're making? Yeah these, yeah, these are coming right out of our data. And as you said earlier, DK, we use them uh, for our staffing. We use them for long-range planning, uh, just all kinds of things. Uh, communication with our uh, principals when they're asking, well, why aren't you guys getting something done? Um, and, you know, people always make an opinion. They say, well, you guys aren't doing very well. Well, we point them right to these KPIs because, you know, here's how we stack up, up against our peers throughout the United States. Here's how we stack up against our peers, you know, locally. So it gives us a framework to have a discussion that, you know, we may not be the best, but we're getting, trying to get there. Um, so it gives us an opportunity to, you know, at least open the discussion when people are uh, either frustrated or they're wanting to find out when something's going to be done or when it's been done. Exactly. And then looking at those trends over time, uh, things like the cost per square foot or, or cost per student, but also what are some of the trends that we're seeing out there? Uh, so it could be energy, utilities. In this case, the graph is looking at event requests. And the reason I put these two together is sometimes there's a correlation between utility usage, you know, your water, your, your electricity, your, your gas, your sewer those things might be in correlation with the amount of activities that are happening after hours. Uh, so, and also some of the usage from the system. So if we're looking at engagement of resources internally, how many of those things are people filling in the information for us versus us having to backfill the information? Uh, so looking at some of these trends over time is, is very critical. Uh, I know, yeah. Jack, you have to break away, but I wanted to get to your any, any final thoughts and feedback. Yeah, I think one of the things, just to comment on the training side of it, you know, that not only once you have the KPIs, I think the biggest thing is, is the training. I mean, we look at training over a year, a couple of years, because what we begin to realize exactly what you just said is there are patterns that get created, you know, year over year. I mean, a school system has a cycle. We start, uh, you know, August 1st for school, and then, uh, you know, we end May 31st, but then we have activities that occur during the summer. So it gives you an opportunity to, you know, what I love about the way the, the, the dude system is set up is we can put, uh, you know, as you've done here, we have total events versus over the request from the portal, so you can kind of monitor things. But, you know, we try to, to correlate as much data as we can because it helps us when we know things are coming up or know a pattern has been established, then we can actually either modify our staff or modify some of our other workload we have to be able to take care of some of the things that we know are going to be coming. So. I think, you know, the, the nice part about it, not only the KPIs, but the trending, and as I said earlier, not, we use the, when we create um, from a KPI to a scoreboard, we'll take, you know, the KPI itself, but then we'll also put a trending with that as well. And then maybe some of the little action things that we're doing to offset that. So, you know, if we happen to have a trend, it's not uh, trending positive. Uh, we want to make sure that folks understand that we're aware of it and we have an action plan to be taken care of it. So we try to correlate that. So, you know, one of our next evolutions that we're using is to take our KPIs and our training information and now begin to put it onto a little scorecard, um, what I used to call the two-minute report, where I can glean how is my organization or my department doing within a two-minute frame. 
because each of us, you know, our daily work, we're very busy. And so we want to be able to, to do that to say, you know, get the warm and fuzzy that I know things are going good or they're not doing good, and I can take action immediately to offset that. Exactly. And that, that gets us into how we start applying these items. So things like decision making based on the quality of data to help ensure accountability, benchmarking as a sanity check to help prove your worth, and really start improving some of the customer service items that are out there. And many a times that's where we really want to get into some of these, these items and details. So are we showing that people have a higher percentage of preventive maintenance versus corrective maintenance? Can we make uh, you know, some of these requests, make things easier, as you were saying, to say, well, if we open this up to more people, then we're essentially crowdsourcing data and we're just making slight modifications to the information versus us having to create everything from scratch because we just really don't have all that time to, to do that. And also changing the, the image that's out there is another key element as well. Uh, so how can we change our image? How can we make sure we're going in the right direction unless we have uh, informed decision making behind that? Do we see perception gaps that may be out there that we can use essentially a, a methodology with these key metrics to track and educate people and make these presentations for resources, staff, monies, whatever the case may be. So we really want to, to, to find those opportunities for improvement. And when it comes to QOD, you know, this is where some of that garbage in, go garbage out, you really want to look at these key elements, like are we using the right categories? Is it accurate? Uh, do we have the right descriptions and other key elements in there? Do we have everything that we feel makes things complete and relevant? Are we using uh, consistent methods? And that's why we, we use a lot of drop-down boxes as many, much as we can, is because it provides that consistency and that reliability, that easy way to slice and dice information to make those presentations and also using terminology and tools that are accessible and easy to digest for, for many folks that, that may be out there. So we want to have everybody have a benefit out of this. You know, we're, we're saying that KPIs and benchmarks and other items, it's not trying to be big brother. What it's trying to do is, uh, I heard a great quote from a gentleman, he says, you know, when I'm looking at this information, I'm not trying to be big brother I'm, that's h hanging over your head. I'm trying to be the brother that's got your back. So helping employees feel like they've got ownership and a stake into it, and they have a, a feedback mechanism so that they have a tool to take that ownership and show how they're winning. They can promote themselves. It's a good, good feeling and PR mechanism. And being able to, to look at the feedback based on the KPIs and see their progress and how they're doing in their position, and then Jack on the administrative side, he can see who's working on what and, and, and make those decisions about distributing the workload and make those uh, good decisions from a budget standpoint, a personnel standpoint, a resource standpoint. So let's talk a little bit about benchmarking, and then we're actually going to go into the system. So what we're looking at is making your goals more accurate with as much feedback and insight and update as possible, making sure you get what matters the most to get the best ROI out of things, and also uh, looking at the latest figures for accuracy. We, we want to be able to read and understand them, as we said before, make sure that the, it gets into the right hands. Uh, you know, Jack mentioned about capital, you know, show what your annual spend is so you can make better planning decisions in the future. And if you deal with things like bond money or federal aid, you know, being able to prove that you're using them in the right way. But from a customer service standpoint, this was a, a number and a stat that really shocked me, uh, was looking at what the perception gap is. Uh, many cases, many of you that have seen a, a slide we had over the years, was what you do versus what people think you do, and this is a, a lot more scarier number than the, the graph we had put together, you know, showing a, 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 about a 70-plus percent difference in what people think and, and what they see and, and, and really what's happening out there. And for many people, perception is the reality. So if you've got a, a nice graph like this, a nice statistic like this, it can help prove what it is that you're doing. So you want to share things uh, with your team. That, that's a key element out there with your teams, with your employees. 
uh, making sure that they can refer back to things like KPIs, working with folks internally and externally, uh, making sure that people have an idea of the progress that you've made in the past and the progress you're going to make in the future, being able to, to uh, have support through business intelligence endeavors uh, you know, with that, that data, and being able to include the right, the right personnel with it for that transparency factor that, that Jack was talking about. And also uh, delivering findings to the state. I mean, those are the go governing bodies that ultimately will, will, for many of us, determine those budgets and those resources. So if you can show the strides and, and they can also come to you and say, what did you do with that? How did you make that happen? It's magical. How did you make that happen? Then you can really start getting those conversations going about how things are going to be better. So from a data standpoint, uh, I mentioned we're rolling this information up as kind of a one-stop shop. That's our ultimate goal uh, with the KPIs and the benchmarks and the reporting, but we want to make it a much easier, especially compared to what we've had in the past. So with 16 years plus of data, we, we wanted to have these insights. So you're going to see something today called dude intelligence. In fact, I'm going to actually share my desktop right now so you can see what is happening. So, Sam, can we see the Dude Data Dashboard? Is that showing up okay? It is. Okay, great. So these are KPIs as we have them right now, and, and we, we break them out into their major topics, maintenance, preventive maintenance, IT, supplies and inventory, event management, utilities. And we have uh, essential KPIs like work orders per student per year or grand total of work orders. Uh, looking at ages, that's very important to many people. How long is it taking for us to, to get these things resolved. So we're taking care of, uh, you know, three out of four items are being taken care of in, in less than a week. And then how much engagement am I getting from people outside of my office? How many people are submitting things online? Uh, but also looking at things such as comparative mapping. So, for example, Jack's going to see Colorado. He's going to see a, a map very similar to this where he can look at various trends like, uh, what are some other people dealing with with work orders per student per year, or incidents per student per year, or different costs per student per year? What are we doing for contract versus in-house work, or how many hours are we seeing in rent time for employees per year? So being able to look at these comparative maps is something that we're, we've currently got right now. But what we wanted to do was say, okay, well, what if I need to slice and dice information? So we are actually going into the evolution into a new tool called Dude Intelligence. And this is something that we're still working on right now, but it's been based on feedback from folks like, like Jack and from folks uh, you know, like Curtis from Frederick County and Mike from Frederick County and a lot of other folks that have said, we, we like what you've got, but we want to see uh, you know, maybe how, how did you develop those uh, those formulas. You know, are you counting seven days in this? Or, you know, we would see uh, this other graphic would make more sense to us. Uh, can we have a little more variety than a, than a gauge, for example? So Dude Intelligence is taking business intelligence tools and putting them right into your hands. So if I want to see things like workload assignments, number of jobs, percentages of assigned to, but the key thing about business intelligence tools is let's say, for example, if I want to see what's happening with a certain year, for example, if I click on one item, everything else starts falling into play. So this is where we talk about slicing and dicing information and having various dashboards. Do I want to look at things based on the type of job or based on where those jobs happen? So these are based on feedback that we've been getting from folks over the last year plus, where if I start looking at things such as my location, show me what's happening in the library and start seeing how things are going to change. Or if I want to look at things such as statuses, for example. So quickly being able to, to filter information down. And also neat little tricks like, hey, I want to spin this graph around because I, maybe I like it like this. So there's some really neat tools that, that we're going to be putting into there. Uh, there's also things like lasso tools. So if I want to capture maybe just a certain amount of area and watch the gauges change. So there's a lot of neat tricks that people are doing with business intelligence right now. Also looking at uh, executive summaries. Maybe I need to make a presentation. So take those items and put them into a PowerPoint for me. So instead of me downloading or taking a screenshot of a graphic, can we pull that into some type of a document uh, like this one, for example, where if I want to see you know, some of those graphs and statistics, maybe these gauges, for example, 
and, and see where the benchmarks are. The top 20% are doing this. This is our value on that. And not everything is going to be tracked. Uh, you know, there may be, say, some things that you, you're, you don't consider important. Just right-click and delete that slide. But an easy way to get those items into a format in case you do need to perform a, uh, a presentation. So let me go back to here and look at some of the KPIs. In many cases, uh, sometimes the gauges and the graphs can be a little bit much. Sometimes you just need a quick number. So I want to know, for example, uh, how much of this, how much of that. I might want to see breakdowns of, of hours. So show me some of these KPIs, maybe in simple numbers. So these are things that we're doing with business intelligence to put, put the information into your hands and be able to quickly switch from one area to another. And if I need to switch to inventory management or capital forecast or, or other topics as we, we have them made available. But be, being able to, again, click something and, and see where the filters are. So we wanted a nice, clean, crisp, professional-looking item that, that you could actually, instead of making a presentation, you could actually take it into a meeting or preparing a Word document or printing off an Excel spreadsheet hook your lap up, laptop up to a projector and show this information live and get the conversation going. So if someone has a question about something, you just mouse over it or you click on it and, and everything else changes dynamically so you can start drilling down into the details. And so that's what we're coming out with in the future is, is dude intelligence. Uh, that, that's really one of the things that we're really excited about is how we leverage that data and we put it right into your hands. Uh, and when we're looking at much of the information, it's all part of a school day platform to try to pull these major topics together and pull in the key elements. And the great thing is it's a constant evolution. So we may find, for example, that there's a new KPI that that's really important to people. You know, we can go in and create that. I didn't have to sit down with Excel and, and burn an hour trying to figure out how to make pivot slicers and, and put a graphic here and a graphic there and then try to figure out how to pull it into a PowerPoint or a PDF or something along those lines. You know, let me be able to actually do that online with some of these major topics. So from the KPIs of over 6,000 educational institutions, we can set standards, know where we stand, know where you stand, set those achievable goals. That's the ultimate vision with this show the progress with getting visibility into the successes over time. That's where the trends come into play. Take the guesswork out of analyzing data. So where do these things come from? Uh, how are these things derived? But also the comparisons, uh, you know, how are you performing against other folks that are similar to you and making sure that you're, you're on the right track for anything that you, you may figure from a, from a business standpoint. It's called business intelligence for a reason. So uh, that's a lot of the main things we want to make sure we had covered today. Uh, Sam, anything else before we uh, switch to our final poll? I don't think there's anything else. All right. So I'm going to pull up a, uh, a final poll here, a couple of final polls. So if anyone needs more information on uh, services, training, pricing information, anything along those lines, I'll pull that uh, slide up here. So I'm going to close this poll, and we're going to get to here. So based on what you just saw with the website, how impactful do you think that's going to be for you? How, how important do you think it's going to be that you can take that information to one nice, clean place, switch topics very quickly without having to switch applications and being able to, to drill down into data without getting into complex reporting or complex Excel spreadsheets? How useful do you think this is going to be for you? How impactful do you think this type of uh, business intelligence approach is going to be for you? I'm going to give this poll about another five seconds. All right. Excellent. So I'm going to close this poll. And I believe we have a final one. Where do you think it's going to be the most impactful? So are you looking more on the maintenance side? And this is a multiple choice. You know, energy is, is always a big one as well for, for many folks. So we want to get your feedback. Where do you think from the business intelligence and the insight into uh, operations as a, as a large entity, where do you see some of the primary focuses? Now, we didn't see event scheduling and community use, but I can tell you where that one's going to be coming in is essentially looking at where are we seeing some of the most events occurring 
what personnel types are they coming in from, how long does it take for us to process the request, if we're doing anything like charging back or cost recovery for the use of our facilities, some numbers around those, uh, how much are we, we recovering, uh, what's our percentages, what's our turnaround time on those. Those are some of the things that we're looking at from the event scheduling and uh, community usage standpoint is really breaking down some of those trends and, and also just looking at a simple number. It doesn't have to be this great, nice graph. Uh, we may just say, I just need these core numbers right here because I'm about to go into a meeting because we're, we're debating on changing our policy about who we're working with. So what organizations are we working with the most? Is it Parks and Rec or is it internal groups or do we see an even split between the two? But I may want to slice it down. Where's Parks and Rec uh, using the facilities the most or vice versa? What, what groups are using this facility the most? So we're, we're doing a lot of neat things with uh, event scheduling, community use. Uh, we, we knew maintenance and IT, we, we tackled that one pretty quickly, uh, but there's always still that evolution that happens because someone will come up with a great idea and we can start implementing those. All right, so I'm going to close this poll and we can see most people, it's maintenance facilities and energy is right up there as well, absolutely. Okay, big, so uh, we're, we're having due to you at the end of April or early part of May. It's going to be at the Raleigh Convention Center right in the heart of downtown Raleigh. So uh, it, it's going to be a blast. We're, we're already working on the agendas and some of the class schedules. We're, we're shaking it up because we're, we actually have a bigger venue that we can, we can have some really neat things on. We've got tours that are for various facilities, everything from the courthouse to the airport to, oh, wow, I think there's about eight or nine of them. Of course, we're going to have bluegrass and barbecue, so that, that's two key elements that are going to be out there as well for the fun part of it because it's like college, you know, you got to have a little fun too. It can't be just all work, 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 class, class, class. So uh, a lot of neat things that are out there, and, uh, you know, it, it's, it's going to be unlike any other dude you we've had in the past. So. Great. Well, thank you, everybody. And if you have any other questions following the webinar or need anything, please feel free to get in touch with us and we appreciate everyone's time today.